believers, where we where we're at out in the out in the jungle, there's no church. That is uh, what we are there for to plant a church. Um, so this is is just a great blessing uh, to be here with y'all uh, this evening and, and just be be a, among uh, fellow believers. Um, and so so I'm Luke. Uh, for for those of you that that don't know, um, my wife. Uh, it's Becky and uh, kids up here, Alian, uh, Chaska, Nabi, Isaac, and Mateo. Um, and uh, I'll start with uh, sharing just a little bit of uh, my background on why I'm in Ecuador. Um, it, when I was 17 years old, uh, in 2002, I think it was, I went to Ecuador for the first time with, uh, my, with my church, my church youth group. Uh, from First Baptist Church in Navasota, Texas, and my wife, at, well, what, not the time, but uh, I, I met this girl down there that was uh, translating for the groups. She was a missionary kid, uh, grew up in Ecuador, and uh, at, by the end of the week, we were talking and stuff, and my dad says, uh, after I, when I came back, the first thing I said was, hey, dad, missionary chicks are awesome, you know, <laughs> so, something like that. So, so, so then, uh, like the next summer, went back for the entire summer um, and, and uh, worked uh, with the uh, International Mission Board, uh, uh, Southern Baptist Arm of Missions, and uh, by the end of that summer, we had started dating, and a couple of years later got married, and always planned on going to Ecuador to do missions, but um, didn't know exactly how to go about that. I um, didn't have a seminary uh, degree or anything like that. Um, so it was about 10 years later, in 2005, we found this little mission organization called To Every Tribe, and um, we... They, they did uh, church planning training. So we moved down there and spent two years uh, training under them, working in, uh, uh, across the border in Mexico. Um, and after that, they sent us to Ecuador. Uh, so we are, so let's, well, that, that's part of that. I'll wait on that. So I've got a quick video here um, that the kids and my wife uh, did before I left. Um, they're up in their, if it looks funny on where they're at, they're up in their little tree house that they built. Um, so I'll start with that and then, and then I'll go from there. Oh, one other thing, um, after the video, throughout this, if you've got questions, um, I will try and uh, pay attention or let's see, if dad, if you'll just say, hey, someone's got a question uh, if I'm not paying attention. And yeah, my parents back there, uh, Doug and Debbie Downs, when, when we left, they were not here. Uh, they're members here at First Baptist, but now my dad's uh, doing an intern uh, pastor out at uh, East Lake Fellowship in Buchanan Dam. Um, so after he retired from the military, after we left, so it's kind of uh, when we left, they weren't here, but now they are. So <laughs> pretty cool. Um, so yeah. Anyway, uh, if you if you got any questions uh, throughout it, stop me. Um, it won't bother me one bit, and I'll I'll answer that and then, and then keep going. So yeah, let me go to this video. Got this fancy clicker here. <laughs> Sorry for all that background noise. I don't, that's what happens when you use a, a phone, I guess, to film that. <laughs> Maybe the creek, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, so yeah, we moved to Ecuador September 5th, 2017. We, uh, we didn't ship anything down. We, those were our, our uh, suitcases. We had, we had my mom come down, so there was uh, eight of us. So we had 16 uh, boxes that we moved down with so that's how we up oh, thank you chris appreciate that telling me to pick up the microphone um yeah so those are the the how we got to ecuador september 5th 2017 um when we moved down there uh, ecuador is in south america uh right below colombia and above peru um if you didn't know that i honestly don't think i knew that when i went down the first time. <laughs> so, so don't feel bad if you didn't know that either. Uh, Ecuador is like probably the size of, of Colorado um, as far as the size of country. Um, so the Andes Mountains run right down the center of Ecuador in the orange there. Uh, and then the coastal is on the right side all along the, the ocean. And um, the, uh, all, the jungle is all on the, on the other side, the right side of the, there where the uh, Columbia and Peru. And we live in the kind of southern, southeastern part of, uh, of Ecuador in Samora Chinchipe is the province. 
So we arrived in Quito, the capital of Ecuador, and started language school. Um, and we were there for about, about eight months. Um, I was the, I was pr primarily, it was me that was learning uh, Spanish. The kids didn't know Spanish either, but they didn't, they didn't learn it until we moved to um, another town. My wife, Becky, grew up there, so she was completely fluent. Um, so after about eight months, we uh, left, left Quito. But during that time, we made our first trip down to the jungle. Um, that's us uh, on our trip down to the jungle, kids with all their little packs and stuff on, um, and, and Becky with a baby and a pack. <laughs> um, we tried, kids got to try grubs and ants for the first time. Uh, that, that was fun. They, they, uh, they said they taste like, the people said they would taste like bacon. Uh, I don't know about that, the, the grubs. But uh, yeah, <laughs> and ants, yeah. So, so we don't, that's not something we really eat very often, but if, if uh, they, the people do eat that stuff, so if, if you have the opportunity, they'll, they'll, they'll give you some. Um, uh, we, so we moved from, from Quito to the jungle. By the time we'd been there eight months, we had some more stuff. So I bought a little trailer, uh, and, uh, and, we, and we took off. And then a couple hours later there, uh, we had wrecked. <laughs> so uh, that was a, a hiccup in the, in the journey. Um, but uh, we did get the, get the car fixed uh, after a few days or so and, uh, and, made it, and made it down there. Let's see. So we, so we moved from up there where Quito was, which is like kind of above the, a uh, little bit above the word Ecuador, uh, down to the red there, Samora Chinchipe. Um, we moved to the northern part of that red province uh, first uh, to a town called Waisimi. Um, so that's, uh, that's the province right there. The orange one that says Nangaritza, that's the uh, county pretty much uh, in that province, and that's where we moved. We moved to the northern part of that county first. So that's, uh, that's Waisimi, town of about 2,000, 2000 people is where we first uh, landed. Um, and that's kind of where we had to start out, and then from there begin making advances into the jungle where the Shuar people, which is the people group that we're working with, uh, live. We couldn't just move straight out there. Um, you, the, that, that would not be received well. Um, this is Waisimi, the, the kids, they, they had little fancy little uniforms in their school there. Uh, that is where they initially learned Spanish, and I'm, I'm telling you, within eight months, they had surpassed me, um, which is really embarrassing, but true. Uh, so, uh, they're, they're doing really well in Spanish. Of course, Mateo was uh, two years old when we got there, um, so he doesn't remember the states, I suppose, uh, really. Um, so Shaime is the largest uh, Shuar uh, community in our area. So while we were in Waisimi, we started making trips out to these Shuar communities. We had um, an invitation to come to a Shuar festival, and that was in Shaime, this largest community here. Um, I'd say it probably has 100 families or something like that. Um, so while we were there, we started building relationships. Um, that's really what it's all about, and I'm, I'm going to try and uh, show you that kind of the way I have these slides set up. So we, one of the first people we met was, was Claudio in the top there, Claudio and Cecilia. Um, and Cecilia introduced us to her parents, Lisardo and Paulina, who are in the bottom, bottom right there. Um, and uh, later, we were able to start studying the Bible with, with uh, Claudio, or with first uh, uh, Lisardo and Paulina, and then Claudio and Cecilia. Um, but it's all about relationships uh, there. Um, we don't have a platform like you have here where everyone in the community knows they can come here and, and uh, it's a safe place and they, and they trust, uh, you know, what happens here. Um, we had to earn the right to be heard. We had to build relationships and, and the way we do that is going out and, and working with them on their farms, their, their fincas, um, just doing life with them, doing whatever they're doing. Um, helping them when we can, and through that, you build relationships. We're able to start having um, spiritual conversations and then gospel conversations, um, and then from there, sharing the gospel through studying the Bible. We uh, in John and Acts um, is where we've been studying, and and that, that's that's uh, that's just how it begins. Um, so this is a, a lady we met at that first um, festival we went to, Nympha. She's there with Becky, and she introduced us to her brother, who are in the next picture over, um, uh, Ugo and Mayra. And we, uh, we now are studying the Bible with them. 
Uh, that's a, just a walking bridge uh, there in, in Shimei uh, that the, the kids were on. Uh, that's a traditional Shuar house. That's where they, they let us stay while we were there um, in the community. They do have wood houses now, um, but that's their, traditionally how they built them before they had chainsaws that they could uh, uh, turn trees into, into usable wood. Uh, so that's, uh, on the right, it's a traditional Shuar dance uh, that they were doing there. Um, so we, we had this, this property that was uh, for sale, and we started camping out on it out there every weekend while we were living in Waisimi. Um, we would go out there Friday night, come back Sunday night. Um, and during that time, we started building relationships and, uh, and started the process of buying that piece of property that we now have built our house on. But it was a, it was a long six to eight month long process of being able to legally buy the property to where we wouldn't get kicked off of it later or something. Um, so there, uh, Estevan is there in the, on the left, the big picture on the left, was the first believer that we met. Um, there were missionaries in this area years ago. There's no missionaries now except for us. And he became a believer through the work of those first missionaries. And he introduced me to Guido, the, the man in the right picture that I'm studying the Bible with there. Um, so that is just how it goes. I, I would not have been able to meet Guido if it wasn't for Esteban, and I wouldn't be studying with, the guy, with Guido if it wasn't for Esteban. Esteban has now left, and I haven't seen uh, him in probably a year, um, but he introduced me to Guido. That's, uh, this is a, a trip we were going to Cecilia's community, that, one of the, that first girl that, uh, that was on the slideshow who introduced us to her parents, Lisardo and Paulina. Um, so... Most of the Shuar villages are on the opposite side of the river is of us. We live on one side, we're right on the river, and they live on the other side where the government has allotted them this land, this community land, um, which can't be purchased or sold or anything. Uh, so most of the, the villages are on that side. Some can be accessed. There's bridges and roads to get over. Others, uh, you have to take uh, a canoe, which is what we're doing there. So this, that's Cecilia. She's uh, showing us the chicha, which is a drink that they make out of uh, sugar cane or yuca or platanos. Um, and they, they, it does ferment, but that's not prime. I mean, there is a problem with uh, them getting drunk off of it. But they also just drink it just for sustenance, I mean, as a, as a meal. Um, so, yeah, that's a tr traditional drink that they pass around. She's got it in like a little uh, half gourd there. Um, and they just pass that around and, and drink it. So during, during COVID, uh, out there, uh, th there was no um, thought of that that was a problem. They continued um, passing around their drinks and stuff. And that's probably, things like that are likely why I got sick. Um, so, but uh, the typical Schwar uh, cookhouse there, um, that's uh, Cecilia's grandpa. And uh, he, he showed us those baskets that they make uh, there on the right. Um, yeah, just like in ministry, um, there's roadblocks. Uh, so uh, this was a, this kinds of things happen all the time. There, it's a rainy and dry season. It knocks down trees and uh, landslides. So we were stuck there. But it was amazing how many people like came and with their machetes and started hacking through so that we could we could get through. Um, but yeah, I mean, like right now, the uh, roadblocks in ministry uh, is like the gold mining. There's so much illegal gold mining going on right now that people are like constantly away from home working in the gold mines that we have a really hard time uh, studying the Bible with some of the people that we have previously uh, been studying with. Uh, so there, the, the roads are bad. That's, <laughs> um, yeah, the, that little fire truck there from Waisimi pulled me out. So that was really nice of them. Uh, <laughs> ended up in the ditch there. Um, that, so, so Cecilia who's in the small picture now, introduced us to her parents, Lisardo and Paulina, who we have now studied almost all the way through Acts. We started in John, and we're studying uh, in Acts now. We're almost done with Acts with them. And they completely understand the gospel. Um, I have asked them questions. They've explained it back to me. Um, and just a couple weeks ago, I was kind of pressing them on it. You know, hey, so if the Bible is true, you believe the Bible is true, and you believe the, you know, what the Bible says about Jesus, you know that the next step is to put your faith in Jesus and follow him. Um, but they, like many other people there, are very concerned about what their families are going to think if they put their faith in Jesus. So pray for them. That, that is where we're at uh, with Lisardo and Paulina. Um, 
And we just started studying with Cecilia like two weeks ago uh, with her and her boyfriend. Um, so that, and that's, that's, uh, we're excited about that. Um, this is uh, Lisardo and Paulina's finca. Uh, we spent a lot of time with them just hanging out. Uh, uh, that's like a farm, sorry. Um, and uh, the naranjillas are a little like jungle fruit that they harvest and in order to sell. Um, and there in the picture on the left bottom, he's showing me how he uh, takes care of his uh, chocolate uh, plants. Um, so they, they, they have a uh, hundred plus acres. Uh, they, they have lots of land that they um, cultivate and, and plant stuff on all by hand. There's zero uh, tractors or machinery. Uh, it doesn't exist at all. I haven't never, I have not seen that at all um, out in the jungle. Um, in the mountains and, and other places they do, but out where we're at, that, that is not, doesn't exist. The terrain is too rough anyway. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to use it. So they do everything by hand. I mean, the most common tool that, the, I mean, the, that they use all the time is a machete. I mean, you can do so much with a machete uh, and a stick. I mean, they just poke a hole in the ground. And the stuff grows there really well. Um, so, yeah, their, their primary uh, source of income is, is planting uh, platanos and harvesting those. Um, and, I mean, they, they eat that as well. And then things like those naranjillas, and they, they do other things like coffee um, and uh, chocolate and, and things like that. But that, agriculture is their primary source of income other than the illegal gold mining that has popped up um, recently. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, great question. Uh, her question was, uh, she knows they speak Spanish in the big cities, but do they uh, understand and speak Spanish out there? Um, yes, they do. Um, there are um, Shuar, parts of the Shuar community that aren't around us that do speak a lot of Shuar. That's their language as well as the name of their people group. Um, but where we're at, uh, anyone my age and younger uh, may know some Shuar, but probably doesn't speak it. They only speak Spanish. And they're pretty literate. Uh, like Cecilia, she reads the Bible really well. When we study with her, she reads it. Um, her parents, we read it because they're, they're not near as literate. They have a, a lot harder time. But her parents speak Shuar amongst themselves. Um, Spanish is their second language, but they, they speak it completely fine. But they're more comfortable in Shuar. So, yeah, great question. Yes, sir. No, not at all. Um, com they're completely different. Uh, I Schwar maybe would have its roots in the uh, Incan language, maybe. Um, I mean, they were the Schwar were 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 headhunters. I mean, fifty years ago, they they have not been a part of. Well, I don't know what you call mainstream society for, for very long. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty recent. Uh, yeah, good question. So this is, a, this is a ministry we do. Yeah, another question? Go ahead. Is there any wild animals? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, honestly, they have killed most of the uh, animals like the deer and monkeys and things like that. Uh, there are not very many of those in our area anymore. There are tons of rodents. They eat a lot of rodents like uh, watuses. I don't know if that's something that translates to English or not. It's like a, uh, I don't know, a small rodent. What's a small rodent? <laughs> it's uh, some kind of little small rodent like the size of a possum or something. Um, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I have not seen any any ostriches. <laughs> Go ahead. Bugs? Oh, there are lots and lots of bugs. You can ask my dad about those. He likes the bugs. Um, yeah, there are lots of bugs and snakes. There are times a year we have found where the snakes come out more. I don't know exactly why, um, but I think it was like May through August, somewhere in there, like uh, that just passed. The snakes were way worse, and they're and they're poisonous. And uh, that, that honestly is the thing that worries me the most with our kids um, is, is the snakes because uh, we're, we're a long ways from a, a hospital, uh, about three hours. 
So that, that worries me the most is the, is the snakes. Um, but yeah, we, we've killed lots of snakes, uh, poisonous snakes. Yes. Are there good snakes? Yes, there, there's, there's good snakes there as well. Mm -hmm. My wife let one live the other day that she thought was good, and I, I guess it turned out to be a coral snake. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. How long ago was that? Okay. Um, I would guess that that was probably in Morona, Santiago, um, which is another province about 12 hours from us where there are shuar, but they are still, um, their culture there is, they've held on to it a lot stronger um, than the area where we're at. Uh, and that's where the majority of the shuar live, are in Morona, Santiago, which is another province. Um, where we are, it's a much smaller group of shuar, but there are, in the other, the other part, there's a church association, and, and, uh, and they have churches and stuff, um, and where we're at, there isn't any churches. So, but they are not as strong in their, in their culture anymore where we're at. Yes, sir? Uh, and that leads me to this question. You said there's no missionaries there other than yourself, right? Mm -hmm. But there have been before? Yep, that's right. Where did they go, and was their work fruitless? Uh, well, uh, Esteban was... was uh, was fruit of their work, um, and I have heard that there are other believers, but I've met some, and I, I, I don't see it. Um, so they went to Peru. They were, they were, they were pulled out, uh, I guess because they were by themselves. They didn't actually live out there either. They lived, oh, four hours from there. They would just go out there, uh, make day trips, or maybe weekend trips out, um, and they were, they were only there for a few years, and they, but they got pulled out and sent to Peru to be on a team in Peru. Okay, so other than those missionaries visiting, what would be the religious background of these people? Just non-existent? Yeah, um, they would say that they were Catholic, um, but Catholicism there in Ecuador is very different from Catholicism here in the States, um, and there it's very mixed with their uh, tribal beliefs, um, that, that the ones that they still kind of have. Um, so it's, it is very mixed, and they, they don't know the Bible. Uh, I have not met any that really know the Bible. They, they don't read it. Uh, they just say they're Catholic. Just, that's just what they say, pretty much. Um, so, yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. Is there any tornadoes? No, I don't, I don't think that is uh, something that happens there. Uh, why? I don't know. Someone else could probably tell you, but <laughs> I don't know. No, there's no tornadoes. There's earthquakes. Uh, we, we, we get earthquakes. We felt earthquakes. Um, a lot of flooding. Uh, we're right on the river. Uh, lots of flooding during the rainy season, landslides and things like that. But nope, no earthquakes. All right. So uh, th this is a uh, children's ministry, um, and uh, I appreciate all you kids' <laughs> questions. I'd, I'd like to have a copy of this video, um, show my kids. Uh, this, is a, this is a ministry that we started oh, about a year and a half ago on a community called La Wansa. And this is we're at, on a porch of a little, just a little building there in the community um, with the kids. And we would... Uh, do Bible storying. I don't know if you've heard of story runners, but it's a set of like 50 stories um, that pretty much start uh, with creation and go all the way through Revelations. Uh, and that's, that's what we're doing there uh, is, is doing Bible storying. And I think we're probably, they've got plants in that picture. So I think we're probably doing like parable of the sower or something. We would tell them, hey, run out and get some stuff that represents the story. And then we would have them retell it. Uh, we try not to bring in a lot of stuff that, uh, that they couldn't replicate on their own. So that, that's why we're using plants there um, that, that, that they uh, were able to go find. Um, so yeah, we sing songs. Um, we're doing that now every two weeks because um, it, it used to be close to us. Now it's about an hour and a half drive uh, from where we live to get to that community. Um, but yeah, sing songs, tell Bible stories, and, uh, and play games with them. 
That's something, uh, a ministry like that, which we're doing in Lawansa, would be a, a great ministry uh, for the church to, to send a team down um, and do like a VBS, a week-long VBS or, or something like that. that we, would, we would love to see something like that happen. Um, so if anyone interested in uh, hearing more about that, uh, let's talk. Um, so this is uh, the, the property that we've been camping on for, for a long time six months, we, we were finally able to purchase um, legally. And so we broke ground on it and started clearing the jungle and stuff the, where we're going to build. And uh, yeah, that's where we, we've now finished that house and we've been living in it for about a year now. Um, there's the kind of some pictures of the construction there. Um, bottom, the bottom left there is when we moved into it. Upstairs was not done. Kids were sleeping in tents on the second floor and until we finished, but we moved there uh, before it was done because like, we wanted the kids to be able to start school. So September of, uh, so we, that's where we, we moved in that same county there in the Orange County, but way further down, right on the Peruvian border. Uh, so yeah, September 2019, about a year ago, we, we landed in Selva Alegre, and uh, like Mateo said, that means happy jungle. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the community. We live right outside that community. Um, about you no know, three minute walk or so, um, and I would say there's 20, 30 families in that community. But then there's Schwar communities all around uh, that community, um, where there's um, even so a lot of the communities have have schools. Um, but this community has a high school, so a lot of kids have to come there uh, in order to, to go to high school. So yeah, that's the kids uh, <laughs> for a while. I'd say a good four or five months or something, they're sleeping in their tents while we're waiting for the wood to finish drying. Uh, it's a process, I'm telling you. I mean, they, uh, they to, to, for the wood we built the house with, they chainsawed it out of the jungle, um, hauled it down, uh, dragging it behind horses, it ends up at the house all muddy. I gotta scrape all the mud off and then, then I gotta stack it, you know, so it can dry with pieces of wood in between or, or have it standing up uh, for like four months until it's dry. Otherwise, it'll be huge gaps in it when we put it up. So those are kind of things, um, yeah, is part of, uh, part of building a house there. Yes, ma'am. Kind of yeah, in the village where we're at, um, there's what you could compare to a gas station maybe. Um, probably smaller uh, than a gas station as far as what's available. Um, flour and sugar, uh, oil, um, so basic, stuff like that. Soap uh, is, is the only thing that's available out there. In order to get to something the size of uh, like the dollar store over here is about three hours away. To get something to the size of like HEB is about five hours away. Um, but the, about a, two months ago, uh, a truck showed up that started, that had, had been coming out, and he go every week comes from Loja, which is about five hours from us, and brings food all the way out there. So that, that is where we get the majority of our food and stuff is, is from the trucks and stuff that bring it in like that. And they sell it to people all along the way. Um, that's what they do. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so electricity, um, we ran a, like a long extension cord basically about 600 feet from our closest neighbor because um, they told us we were going to have to put up a, a post and a transformer and all of that in order to have electricity. Um, so that's what we had up until about a month ago. We finally got solar put in, uh, and that was great because the electricity was very um, intermittent. Uh, um, throat's clogging up. Um, <clears throat> The electricity was really intermittent. Um, we would go uh, for like a week sometimes with no electricity. Um, a day, at least once a week, you'll be out for a day. Uh, so we were really excited about that to get the solar. Um, water, we pump up from our creek. It's right by our house. Um, we, we, we set up a hydraulic ram pump. Um, if you're familiar, familiar with that, it doesn't need electricity. Um, so that's what we have for water. Uh, Internet, we just got about six months ago. Actually, it's 
close to a year now. Um, that was awesome. We didn't have before that. Um, we didn't have any internet. I would have to uh, travel to to get internet. So we've got satellite internet, huge net satellite internet out there now. So that's a blessing. And people come to our house a lot just to be able to use the internet. So that's a uh, it's another uh, way of meeting people, especially during this time where kids have come home to live where that were in university and can't study in person anymore, but in order to come home, there's no internet, so they come to our house and, and uh, do internet and stuff. So, yeah, this is the school when we moved out to the Alegre. That's the, the school the kids uh, went to, tiny school. Like, that picture in the top left there, that's all the kids in the school. And if you remember, in the other school, thank you so much, in the other school they had, uh, thank you, they had uniforms, like really fancy little uniforms, Um, here, it's more like a prison uniform. So, yeah, way, way different living out in the rural uh, community. Way different. It is not uh, uncommon at all for them to tell the kids to bring their machetes and uh, picks to, to school. And they show up with their, their tools. And I mean, it's agricultural, so they, they teach them that stuff from the get-go. Um, so there, they're, they're working and picking and <laughs> planting stuff. Um, and the parents are super involved. It's another great way for us to build relationships. Um, they, they don't pay janitors or um, people to cook lunches or anything like that. It's all done by parents. There's, they call for a minga, um, which is like a work day. And up there in the top left, uh, Becky's working in the school kitchen, cooking up uh, lunch for the, for the work day. On the right there, top right, uh, we had just finished building a little uh, roof for a garden. Um, the, and the two people in, in the bottom uh, were studying the Bible with Byron and, uh, and his wife. And Berkis, this uh, other lady that's with Becky, um, her husband is a teacher. And we, we study the Bible with, with them as well. But yeah, uh, working at the school is just part of what you do in the community. Um, parents are required to go to meetings. If you miss them, you got to pay f like fines and stuff. So yeah, the very, very involved. Um, so Guido, Esteban, who's in the bottom right there, introduced me to his nephew Guido. And um, about six months ago, Guido just showed up at the house and I started studying the Bible with him. And after studying in John for a while, um, it was clear that he understood the gospel. And I, I, I said, Guido, so are you ready to put your faith in Jesus? And he was, he wasn't. He said, no, I, he he was worried about what his, what his uh, mom, he lives with his mom, uh, was going was gonna to think. So I said, hey, Guido, go home, pray about it, think about it, and, and, and we're going to talk about it again next week. So he came back the next week, and, he, and he, he was. He said he was. So Guido put his faith in Jesus like six months ago, and now I'm hoping in the next couple weeks, uh, maybe even while my parents are there, um, I'm going to baptize Nobby here, our son Nobby, uh, while they're there. And I'm hoping Guido will also get baptized. Um, so be praying for that. We're really excited about that. I think that that... Um, it will be a huge step for the people in our community to see um, someone like Guido put his faith in Jesus and uh, make it clear to everyone that he's done that through, uh, through baptism. Um, there's Guido. He, he speaks Shuar, and he understands Shuar, and he's comparing the, the Shuar and Spanish Bibles right there. there is a, there's a, a Shuar Bible. It's not complete. I think it lacks seven or eight books in the, in the Old Testament. Um, uh, about six months ago, I helped... Uh, in Morono, Santiago, about 12 hours from us, where that other Shuar, uh, the other Shuar live, uh, they have the translation facility, and uh, helped put a roof on that building uh, about six months ago. Um, so there, uh, Guido is sitting next to me in the back of the picture there, and he was helping me because he was further ahead in John, um, where we've been studying, and he was helping me t uh, teach the Bible to Ugo and Maida, who their sister, Nympha, introduced me to, to, to Ugo. Um, so yeah, so that was really neat to, to have him be able to do that uh, and just see him uh, begin at, be able to start teaching it on his own. Uh, th this is just showing just kind of life in Ecuador. There, there's a lot of protests. This one particularly was over gas prices. Um, I think that that happened right before my parents came down last year. They had to like change their, their flights because of it. There was... They were blocking off planes coming into the country and everything else. Um, that's how they protest. Uh, it's pretty effective. 
Um, the, the government raised the gas prices, and a week later, after protest, I had to put them back down. Um, <coughs> so, yeah, they, they, they block off the roads with sticks and dirt and everything else, and uh, nobody can get through, so they shut down the, shut down the country that way. Um, there's, uh, there's Doug of the Jungle. There's <laughs> Last time my parents were there, my dad was uh, showing he could still do things like swing on vines <laughs> to the, for the kids. So, yeah, that was, that was hiking. On that hiking trip, we, uh, we met uh, this couple here, um, Byron and uh, his, his wife, Doris. And uh, we, we now are, have been studying the Bible with them. I pray for them. They're um, struggling in their marriage. His wife's trying to do a little internet cafe in another town. So they're, they're, uh, yeah, they're having a hard time. So pr- pray for them. Um, but uh, th- that's... that's what it's all about, we, that's how we're able to, to build relationships is just hanging out with people. Here on the left there, we're, uh, they killed a pig. I think we all went out to their house for Christmas, and they had all their kids that live other places come out and stuff. And they're, uh, they live way out. Um, you have, to get there is, is, is quite a trek of just a lot of mud and stuff. So a lot of times the kids ride on the horse. That's our little boys, Isaac and Mateo, um, with their little girls uh, on the horse there. Um, there's a study in the Bible there with, with uh, Byron and, and Doris. Um, there's uh, Luis and Berkis, uh, another couple. He's a school teacher. He's an Allian school teacher. Um, they, uh, they are also uh, been studying with us, um, and, uh, and, and they're, they're, they're doing well. They're, they're, they are not, how would I, they enjoy studying the Bible, but for them, uh, it's just interesting. Um, so, so pray for them that, that they would understand uh, the gospel and the need to put their faith in Jesus, um, and, and that it's not just a, a, a moral book to uh, to follow. Um, yeah, this is uh, working in. I was working in a community with Lee Sardo. He's the president of his, or he's the vice president of his community. His brother's the president. Um, everything for that community building had to be brought across uh, the river and then hauled up on horseback. Um, so it's quite a quite a task for them to build anything like that. Um, Oh yeah, those are those are the, all the people there uh, that we're currently ministering with. Um, Guido and his mom there on the left, and Luanza, uh, Cecilia, uh, Claudio and Cecilia there, that we just recently started studying with. Lisardo and Paulina right there in the middle, which is Cecilia's parents, uh, Byron and, and uh, Doris, and uh, Ugo and Mayra, and Luis and Belkis. Um, so uh, just uh, take a, a mental picture of that and uh, speak. Uh, Keeping those those folks in your in your prayers um, about all the things that, that I was talking about. Um, so yeah, that that is that is all I've got. If if anyone's got any questions, feel feel free to ask them. Uh, yes, ma'am, here in the front. Do they use cell phones? Uh, cell phones don't work out there, but they have them. A lot of people have them. Um, yeah, if they are able to get internet, they'll use WhatsApp and stuff, Facebook. Um, yeah, so yeah, they they do have cell phones. Um, like people out there to family other places. No, they go to like a little internet cafe, uh, send messages, stuff like that. Uh huh. There are satellite phones, some type of satellite phone that some people have. Yeah. Is there any resentment your presence there? Um. No, I don't. No, I have not sensed that. Um. No, we're, we're pretty. Pretty, pretty accepted, um, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody's aware of why you're there, right? Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Someone. Yes. Uh, Nobby sleeps in a tent a lot, but uh, the because he likes to. <laughs> but uh, no, the rest of us sleep in the house. Good question. Yes, ma'am. I, not that I know of, uh, didn't, didn't come across any. Most of it's right on the river um, where, they're, where they're digging. Yeah. Yes, sir. What kind of, what kind of medical attention do people have? Do they not use Western medicine? Medical attention. No, they use, I mean, they obviously have all kinds of, uh, like, uh, Herbal stuff, things like that nature, natural stuff. 
um, that they uh, use. They, they know a lot about the plants and stuff. Um, but no, they, they do um, Western medicine as well. Uh, there's a clinic, a uh, real small clinic, about uh, 15 minutes from us. Um, and then anything bigger, a clinic would be in Wysimi, about two hours from us. And then a hospital would be about three hours away. That's where we had to go when Isaac broke his arm. And we, Wysimi, we had to go when he busted his head open. Um, boys, but yeah. So oh, that, 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 yeah, that's not super close, but yeah. Uh-huh. So, uh, Yeah, so first of all, with the water, um, yeah, the, the, I don't, I have not seen, what, when, I, when we were building the house, uh, I was living in a tent and then in a, like a shed that I built for several months. Um, I drank straight out of the creek, never had a, any problems. That's where we get our water. We do use a filter now, but I never had any problem with it. Um, you don't, you, no one drinks out of the river. They know that that's contaminated from the gold mining, got mercury in it. Uh, no one really fishes out of it anymore. They used to, um, not anymore. Um, but no, I, they most of them uh, take a a hose, like a one and a half inch uh, hose or something, way up some creek and bring it down uh, like that. Well, whereas we use, we're using this little um, uh, ram pump, hydroelectric ram pump, to bring it from right where the creek is up to our house, uh, which is real close. But no, I don't. I haven't seen that. That's a that's a huge problem. Um, and as far as the um, the mix of Catholicism with the uh, native religion stuff, um, I don't see that they put a whole lot of belief in their in their um, beliefs from you know a hundred years ago or fifty years ago or whatever. Um, they still some. I mean. There's still residual effects of that that I hear come out in some of the stuff they say, but I wouldn't say it's real strong. Um, <clears throat> mostly, uh, I, I, they, they would say they believe in God, uh, but that's about the extent of it. Um, they don't know the, the, the Bible. They don't know the gospel. Um, if you ask them, which is true here as well, if you ask someone... Um, which I do. Um, hey, uh, how do you? Uh, how are you saved? How, how do you have eternal life in heaven? Uh, they would. They would. They would answer with, oh, you know, you 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 be a good person. You treat others nice, um, and 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 Jesus will let you in. God will let you in. That kind of an answer. Um, so, which I, is also something you would hear uh, here in the states as well. Um, so, yeah. Yes, I saw someone with, yes. Uh, yeah, definitely. People come to our house uh, lots. Um, Guido, that's how he, we started studying with him. He just showed up. And, uh, and after talking with him for about 10 minutes, um, I asked him if he wanted to start studying the Bible, and he said he did. So that, that's, that's uh, how we started studying the Bible with, with Guido. Yeah, we live right uh, on the river, and we have a little road that goes past our house that goes down to the river, and people walk down that road in order to get from the river up to the community to buy stuff all the time. So, yeah, we have uh, people come by the house uh, all the time. Um, yes, we do. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Was the question about water? Yeah, 
Yeah, it, before when we didn't have uh, very good electricity, um, when the electricity would go out and we only had a, an electric pump, we wouldn't have water. Um, so yeah, very quickly we would run out of our little tank we had on the side of the house and we would uh, just use the, use the creek. I think, I think when my parents were there a year ago, we didn't have any running, well, we, we, I mean we had running water, but we didn't have a shower or anything. So I think we were, we were showering in the river. That was before there was a lot of gold mining going on. Or in the creek. Um, but yeah, now that we have our solar and hydroelectric, uh, or uh, sorry, uh, electric ram pump, um, we have a really good source of water. It's really good. <laughs> yes, Karen. Yeah, yeah, they mostly platanos, and that's the main thing they sell. Um, and trucks come out. Trucks come out um, multiple times a week, I'm sure. Probably one truck comes out a week, but multiple different trucks come, are coming out once a week and buying those from them um, at a much cheaper price and then taking them five hours away to Aloha and selling them for a lot more. So yeah, that's, that's how they make their money um, primarily. Because mm -hmm. there's, no, there's, no, like, I mean, there's no other businesses or anything like that out there. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyone else? Yeah. Did you say y'all lived on the water, the river? Yep. Mm -hmm. To the river? Uh, no, it has not flooded. Um, I heard there's a 30-year flood. Uh, yeah, like 30 years ago, there was a 30-year flood. So, <laughs> um, we're probably from here to HEB parking lot or something from the river. Yeah. Hey, Luke, I noticed with your pictures, nobody is obviously wearing masks or social distancing. How is the community with this virus? I know you were sick. You yeah. Said. Yeah. Ecuador, it, the country, is super strict on those regulations. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a, a national mandate to wear masks. Um, and everything is, was shut down really hard for a while, uh, countrywide. Uh, schools are still all virtual. Um, they, everything's on a national level. It doesn't matter that out there everyone's hanging out anyway, and there's really no real reason for the schools not to meet because everyone's getting together anyway. But it's all the decisions are on a national level, so there's no school, um, which is really bad because, like, um, for my oldest daughter, Alian, she, her, in her class, out of, I don't know, maybe 10 kids that are in her class, only two have access to Internet. <clears throat> The other ones live like on the other side of the river and stuff and, and aren't able to, to do the classes. So, um, and, and out where we live, yeah, it's come night and day difference than from the city. No one does any social distancing. There's, uh, yeah, no, no change uh, whatsoever. But there, it, nationally, uh, I wasn't able to, we weren't able to drive for quite a while. And then the, we were able to drive, but only... Uh, every other day, depending on your license plate um, and things like that. You could only go so far uh, away from where you live and things. So, yeah. But your community is doing fine. Yeah. There may have been possibly a COVID-related death uh, in our larger community area, but no, doing fine. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. Weather, I mean, it's jungle, rainy, dry, uh, but I have not been able to pin down, uh, and when I ask people, they say, uh, you know, sometimes it's rainy, sometimes it's not. Uh, they do say, I think, certain times of the year tend to be a little more, but it, it seems like to me it's hard to read. Um, it, it, honestly, it's, it's, it's pretty mild climate, I feel like. Um, we're, we're in the jungle mountains, uh, so it's not real real hot I mean at night sometimes we we sleep with a wool blanket um, sometimes not but then during the day it's probably I don't know 80s maybe 90s something like that um, bugs honestly my dad would say different probably but <laughs> but bugs really are not that big of a problem we have no uh, most of our windows are completely open the ones on the bottom floor we put bars on but the upstairs windows uh, completely open. We don't have a screen on anything anywhere in the house. Uh, 
and mosquitoes are not a problem. Uh, a couple times a week, you know, when you're eating supper, there's a lot of bugs in your food, you know, or we'll turn the light off or something. But it really, it's, it's not too bad. I mean, I, I t- you know, I was talking to my sister, and like last night I was, I was hanging with my sister, and I left the door open for a second, and she was like, oh, shut the door. We don't like any bugs in the house, you know. Um, so I guess it's a matter of perspective. But like, like for us, I'm like, well, if it's open, like, then they can leave when they want, you know. But I mean, <laughs> like, I, I, I mean, I don't know. It's just what you get used to, I guess. Like, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, Chaska and Alian um, will, will say, you know, that they, they miss their friends um, and, and seeing people that they, that, they, that they knew before and stuff. Uh, family, um, obviously. Um, Nobby, he likes food like me. That's probably what was his, my hardest part was the food, probably. First six months, I had a rough time. Um, it, but it was a good transition. We lived in Quito where there was lots of restaurants. Uh, so and then we moved to Keith or to a Waisimi, y- uh, where there was not so much restaurants, but there were a few restaurants. Um, and then now where we're at now, nothing. So at least I had that transition, but that was that was rough for me. Um, I, it's great being back here. I love Texas food, um, and uh, I, I I'm enjoying it. <laughs> so yeah, I had barbecue today. <laughs> so yes. Yeah, I had it, um, and there's people in my community that have had it. When I had it, my, no one in, my, in the family got sick, just me. Um, so, yeah. Go ahead. Why didn't I bring the rest of them? Well, that's a, that's a good question. They, they probably, yeah, the kids are probably thinking that same question. Um, <laughs> uh, my wife, Becky, honestly, she, she loves being in Ecuador. Now she does wish I would have taken some of the kids, but this was kind of a last minute, uh, trip, five of them, right? Of course. Um, but this is kind of a last minute trip. Uh, so yeah, when, when you get last minute trip, you can't always find the best prices. Um, but hopefully we'll, we'll come back with the, with the whole family. It's a little hard to leave. Um, leaving the house anytime we've left over the past year at all we we find someone to stay in the house to uh kind of guard it so that's a little hard the house isn't done we need to close it in uh a little more so right now anyone could walk in and go upstairs into any of the rooms there's no doors or anything up there so yeah that, for those reasons it's hard to leave and we've got lots of animals uh so kids love animals becky loves animals um but but yeah <laughs> so yes sir Uh, as soon as I got back on, on Tuesday, this a couple days ago, I had to have a COVID test so that I could get it back in time. Um, it came back negative. So I've got to have, I had to have a COVID test to prove that I was negative to get back in the country. So mm-hmm. without that, they would uh, make me uh, quarantine for two weeks. So, mm-hmm. yep. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, um, currency is U.S. dollar. They switched in about year 2000 because their uh, su- the sucre, which was the Ecuadorian currency, was so inflated. Uh, so they switched to the U.S. dollar. So that's real nice. Um, the food, at, I mean, they they raised the price a little bit out where we live um, because it's got to come so far. But um, no, most things, as long as you're not trying to get something fancy that's imported from the states or something. Uh, like peanut butter, that would be one of those things. <laughs> I'm bringing back peanut butter. Um, when I go back, we miss peanut butter. Um, yeah, as long as you're uh, eating just normal stuff, it's pretty cheap. I mean, fruits and vegetables are, are way cheaper than here. We eat healthier there, I'd say, than we do here um, because it's uh, so much cheaper to do so. so mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Enough what? 
tourist. Um, out where we live, no, there, there, there is not uh, tourism out there. Um, yeah, nope. The only people that would possibly be from somewhere else would be uh, people that having something to do with the gold mining. Um, but that's still mostly nationals just from other cities. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Anything else? Yes, Teresa. Is there a president out there or is it not? Oh, petty stuff. I mean, uh, like, uh, if we left stuff sitting out, um, if there wasn't someone staying at our house, yeah, yeah it, it would, the stuff would walk off, sure. Uh, I, we haven't really haven't lost too much. I think maybe some chickens or something, but, I mean, still chickens, you can eat them, you know. But, uh, yeah, it's not terrible. Mm -mm. <laughs> Thank you all so much. I, <laughs> this was fun. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Luke, I want you to stay up here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for you in, in just a minute. W w did I understand you correctly that one of y'all's primary sources of food is guinea pigs? Is that? <laughs> <yeah>? <laughs> no, not primary sources. We have guinea pigs, and people eat guinea pigs, but for us, it's not one of our primary sources. Okay, it's your All right, okay. Well, I just wanted to clarify that. So... <laughs> Anyway, I wanted to, uh, I'm going to pray for each of these folks individually uh, here in just a minute. I'm going to pray for Luke and, and uh, encourage you as I do. You know, we're not going to just gather around him, um, but, but just extend your hand towards him. And we're going we're gonna to pray for him in just a moment. Also, we're going to pray, I'm going to pray for three other people that I've heard about today, this afternoon, that are very ill. Um, Charlie Goebel, he was diagnosed with COVID, not yet very ill, but he's got pretty severe asthma. So they're somewhat concerned about that. Uh, Brandon Evans is in ICU in Austin with COVID. He's our ag teacher here in, uh, in Burnett, and I found about him today, so we want to certainly pray for him and his family. And then uh, also David Anderson had to go back to the emergency room today. He's had severe, severe pneumonia. Uh, they did look at it. There was a lot of, of just drainage, just kind of weird stuff. But they said it was relatively normal after surgery and having your lungs scraped and all that. So uh, anyway, but we certainly want to pray for him. He is back home, by the way. So uh, anyway, if you'll indulge me, the prayer is going to be maybe a little longer. But I uh, also want to remind you, if you want to contribute to the Downs ministry, just put it in the basket in the back and we're going to collect all that and we're going to send it to two every tribe we already contribute so we know exactly how to get it to them and and uh, go through that so uh, you can just make if you've got cash great if you want to make out a check just make it out to first baptist church and every dollar that's given tonight will go to uh to to every tribe uh, and to the downs family so Anyway, uh, well, let me lead us in prayer, and, uh, and we'll close tonight. And I'm going to pray for Luke first and just encourage you to extend your hand towards him. Father, I'm just grateful just to have Luke here tonight to uh, just share with us the people that they're ministering to, studying the Bible. And it, he makes it sound so simple, just asking somebody if they want to study the Bible. And through that, uh, they learn about you, Jesus, and they place their trust in you. And I just pray for a continued anointing on the Downs family, uh, Luke and Becky, as they reach out to people, that people would just be drawn, just unexplainably drawn to them. They wouldn't even know why they're coming to their house. They wouldn't even know why they're greeting them on the street. Uh, but it would be because your Holy Spirit is drawing them to yourself. I know that it's no accident that they're in the village that they are. And I know you've got great plans for those people there. And you love them as much as you love us. And you want them to know you as much as you want us to know you. And uh, so just uh, may there be just a supernatural anointing, a supernatural uh, power on Luke and Becky. And uh, that you would just just confirm the words that they say with, uh, with works of power so that they would know that you are for real, that you really do love them. And this, this message about you, Jesus, is true and that many of them would, would follow you. And Lord, I want to lift these up that are specifically uh, folks that they're ministering to with Guido and his mom. I pray that you'd give his mom an openness to his decision to trust you. And uh, Lord, for the kids uh, in Luanza, I just pray that many of them would come to know you and trust you. And, and uh, this couple, Claudio and Cecilia, that they're studying the Bible with, that they would uh, trust in you as Savior and Lord. And Lizardo and Paulina, 
Lord, that they too would just cross that bridge and, and take that step of courage regardless of what their family thinks and, and that they would uh, keep their eyes solely on you and what you think and what you desire from them. And Byron and Doris, I pray for their, uh, their marriage and the challenges that they're experiencing. I pray that you would heal their marriage in the name of Jesus and that they would come to know you and place their trust in you. And Hugo and Mara, uh, Lord, that they too would become believers and Lewis and and uh, Belksy, Belkies, uh, that, Lord, it wouldn't just be an intellectual exercise, but, Lord, they would come to realize that you're for real and your claims are true, that you do love them, and you died on the cross for their sins, Jesus, and you're raised from the dead. They would confess with your mouth, their mouth that you are Lord and believe in your heart, their heart that, God, uh, that uh, God, you raised Jesus from the dead. And, uh, Lord, we pray for these who are struggling with health issues, David Anderson and, and his pneumonia. I pray that you would heal that in the name of Jesus, supernaturally. Just place your hands on him, Jesus. And, and uh, Lord, for Brandon Evans um, in ICU with COVID. And, Lord, um, you know, we just ask that you would heal him, but give him peace, give his family peace and comfort, and that that healing would be supernatural in nature. And, uh, Lord, we pray for Charlie Goble, who uh, just diagnosed... Uh, either today or yesterday, and, and we pray for healing for him. I know he's got asthma and, and uh, may react strongly to this, and I just pray that you would watch over him and uh, heal him in the name of Jesus. Father, we're so grateful for this opportunity to, to be here together, uh, people from different congregations, but all one family, all one family under you, Jesus, and, and I'm just so grateful that, uh, that our family here in Burnett is huge and uh, several congregations, but many, many brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for giving us a reason to come together tonight and to worship you and to hear about what you're doing around the world, specifically in Ecuador. I pray that you'd speak to our hearts as to how we might uh, participate in partnership with the Downs in their ministry there in Ecuador, and that, uh, that we would honor you and, and encourage them through our time together. We love you so much, Jesus. Thank you for loving us first. It's in your name we pray. Amen.